Hello my friends, welcome back. I should be cleaning the studio, but um, this poor painting so desperately needs to be done. Done a little thinking about these hands, and I think I have it more figured out. So, one is this hand is totally in the wrong place. So we're going to start trying to rework this um, and because everything is dried, this poor painting is sat again while I built all those frames. Um, it's very easy to paint over. So now that's going to be her shirt. This arm comes up. and is holding the back of her phone. So just to, this is going to disappear. And it's actually kind of cute, it's going to work out that they're Bones are going to be closer together than they themselves are, which I think is where I'm trying to go with this idea. I just realized <laughs> this is the wrong color skin tone. Yeah. So I'm looking for my lizard and crimson. And, of course, with all the carpentry I've been doing in here, everything has a little bit of a veneer of dust on it. by changing the skin tone it also um, pops her out of her um, yellow shirt yellow blouse just lightening Getting a little bit of drag, so I'm just going to soften that a little bit with the um, with my finger. So blue jeans are four. Now I'm looking for my deoxy purple. That, however, is thin blue or green. like it because I want to use that and the lizard and crimson as the basis for my shadow part of her hand carry that into the arm a little bit as well. So, this is where I'm going to get a go with the piece. I've got a little bit of adjustment to do in her face. I'll work these things through. And then, of course, the last bit is to finish this hand and the shadow and the highlight there. Their hair. Although, well, we'll figure it out. So I'm going to switch to time lapse just so you don't have to um, <laughs> watch me struggle. Um, because, you know, 
If you're not struggling with your pain, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> or right. Sometimes they work perfectly. And sometimes they don't. So, like I said, I'm going to switch over to time lapse and keep working on this. I think we'll get to a better painting eventually, or the painting I want. Excuse me, I had to belch. Um, so pretty happy with how the face has turned out. Feel a little bit more. Feel pretty good about that grouping, that interaction there. And now just working on her hand and then it's just the bar surface. So this piece is, I'm actually thinking, no, but I like that, I think. I'm even going to take it out further. Yeah, there we go. Kind of going for the, you know, pinky extended thing. Unfortunately, like I intensified that fingernail, but now that I'm moving it, but it shouldn't be a problem because all of this under the hand is shadow. Yeah. This fingernail should be Fingers being seen, the little, 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 little finger is being seen side on. So this will stumbling over my words. Looks a little spooky right now. So I think now we just come back in and try to. mesh in the shadows so I'm getting these shadows by first this red and then I'm going to lay in a little bit of white and lay the um, orange I think on top get that sort of salmon color and I'm sure I've said it before but the order you lay color in will affect the color that remains on the surface does that make sense so if I like I'm doing red white and now orange will give me one kind of color And, but if I do it in another order, I'll get a different quality of color. Obviously, if the white's on top, it's going to be the most pastel. But, you know, we work our way. And so you can just play with that, too. And I think what I'm going to have to do is come back and do the bar surface again, too. Um, because you want to get these shot. The, 
uh, you know, the shadow on top, the shadow underneath. It's this weird little balancing act. And one of the things you have to do occasionally is peel back this more dried exterior of the stick so that you don't get a scratching mark. It's like right now I'm feeling it's, I didn't get enough red into this. It's getting too orange. So I'm gonna add a little more red, just lightly. Maybe a touch of white. And then back to the orange, and back around again, and around again, and around again. And what I will do, because the view you're getting, which of course is the view that the person looking at this painting, like in a gallery setting, a museum setting, will get, but it's very much a different painting when you're right on top of it as I am. And that's, you know, that's the way I see the painting when I'm right up on it. When I go to a museum, I'm the one setting off the alarms because I've got my face right up in the painting. So now we're just going to do the kind of the same process to get this highlight. So we're going to first lay in just a little bit of this orange. I think I'm just going to leave that confused edge confused. Now, see how much red is on that white, and I don't want that much orange into the piece. Now, of course, I've cut, picked up a teeny bit of blue, which you probably can't see from there. So wipe that off, because if I put the blue in, then it's going to get grayed out. So you got to be careful about that. You need to pay attention to how clean your um, paint stick is. It's like cleaning your brushes. So you want to make sure, sorry, I got this, no, that is shadow. But see how these little bits of paper are popping through, so I'm going to have to work some of that back in. I like, it's really cool when you can have zips of other color popping through this sort of over painting technique um, Wayne Tebow called those zips Trying to decide if that color is too yellow to be. So I'm just going to drag a little bit more orange into this and then come back again with the yellow and very lightly. I'm not trying to put too much of the yellow pigment down but almost using it as a blender. And the sheet of paint sticks do make blender sticks. Um, I tried using them once and <laughs> I didn't like the results, so I never used them again. So now come back in here with a little bit of this orange again. And you can kind of see how the shadow and the highlight are pretty darn similar, which probably means not only do I need to add the yellow, but I may need, in fact I know I need, 
a little more white, which I thought I had a lot of white there. So, I feel like that's the piece. At long last. <laughs> and of course the last thing is to sign it. And uh, I do like the title. So taking the gloves off now because I'm not going to be using the paint sticks. And that way I will have um, clean hands for work later tonight. Today's the eighth, right? Bar. <laughs> sure it is. So the working title all along has been in their own little world, and I think I'm gonna stick with that. So And I've always signed with pencil. Oh, my signature just completely deteriorated there. Might have been because I was struggling to lean over. So, to me, that's the last part of the painting being finished. When I sign them, they're done. So if you ever see a painting somewhere that doesn't, that looks like mine, but doesn't have a signature on it, that meant I never thought it was finished. All right, I'm gonna stop this for a second because I wanna give you a close look. So hang on just a moment. So again, there's the whole painting. And of course, while I'm showing this, you know, I love your, if you will subscribe, give me a follow. I love a comment or two. So you can see how you get this hair texture, the thickness of the paint as we move through. See, look how slurpy, buttery this is. That might be a, that white line might be a spider web. But you can see you even get little chunks of the paint stick. This is that one screen, her text screen. See, there's those little white pieces of paper that I was talking about. I know I said I was done, but that might bother me enough. This is up under her arm, where we then find our two little friends. Here are the faces that I was working on. Sorry for the shakiness, but I just knelt down. But so that's the whole, so that really gives you the idea of just how slurpy and textured the painting actually is. Because this is pretty big. I believe they're 54 inches tall. Or 54, yeah, 54 inches tall and about 40 some inches wide. So that's the painting. Again, a subscription, a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you feel is uh, appropriate. And uh, thank you so much for watching. And a subscription will let you know when the next painting gets posted. I think, well, technically the next one will probably be stained glass. So thank you all so much. You can see all of my artwork at gregleach.com. If you're into the cycling stuff, you can read the blog, theartofcycling.com. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter if you like. Thanks a lot.